If you haven't Googled already, Ehiku is Hawaiian for seven, which references the seven drivers in this IEM. Three DDs and four BAs. Yes, you heard me. Three DDs. So will we get some earth-shattering, soul-sucking bass? Um... Hello and thank you for clicking on this video where I'll be sharing my experience with Audio Ehiku. This IEM is apparently made by one DIYer in China. Not sure if he's still a student by now, but if he still is, we all know what he's going to do once he graduates. Anyway, since this is made by one person and not a company, there's no box or anything, but let's talk about what you get. For accessories, they'll come with the typical IEM case that has the fake leather feel, but it's well sized, not too big, but big enough to store your IEMs and accessories like a dongle. Inside, you have a cleaning tool with a few interchangeable ear tips. I'm always changing ear tips so I don't use these, and they are using MMC. X cable and whenever I have this connection, I'll always use this opportunity to equip the FIO LCRC cable. Look at that. The stock cable is fine, has that plasticky feel throughout and it is relatively light and I like how it has a color hue to determine which is left or right, but I like my LCRC cable better because of course, swappable terminations. For the design, this is going to be debatable, but this looks like a cell with some blood in it. Probably due to all the blood and sweat this person had to sacrifice to make this IAM, I'm still having a debate within myself on how it looks because at times, I'm looking at it and thought, that's quite pretty, and other times I'll be thinking, that looks disturbing. It's probably because one is when I'm drunk and the other is when I'm sober. I'll let you decide which is which. For fit and comfort, this IAM fits my ear pretty comfortably. But the size of this IAM is slightly deeper, so it sits a little outside of my ear, but the contours on this IAM IEM doesn't apply any unwanted pressure around my ear, so I'd say it's quite comfortable. This IEM has a very different sound presentation compared to other V or U-shaped IEMs, and it was quite difficult to describe it at first until I measured this IEM and saw this, which made more sense, but the sound isn't as scary as the graph suggests. So I'll do my best to describe the sound as best as I can. Here we go. For the bass, if you're expecting to have a super deep, soul-crushing, air-sucking, concrete-destroying bass with the three DDs, you're going to be somewhat disappointed. It has more emphasis on the sub bass, and I'd say they have enough bass to maintain the fun in the track, but probably not enough for a bass hit. I would say this is like a Maestro SE Lite, where the bass is textured, it's got detail, it has the thump, but it's not as full, it has the rumble, but it's not as controlled, it sounded like an introduction to what the Maestro SE's bass sounds like, although not quite there, but at a much cheaper option, like 10 times less, which is mind-blowing and an achievement in itself. For the mid-range, vocals are brought forward in front of the background music, which is great. However, the overall sound presentation sounds a little hollow to me. Vocals, instrument notes is somewhat lacking that fullness, that note impact whenever you listen on a really good gear and the vocals come through, all powerful and it hits you right in your soul. I felt something is missing on the audio ehiku. The treble is slightly elevated in regions where I'm not particularly sensitive to, so it doesn't pierce my ears as some IEMs do, and it helps with making the instruments come through the bass. But it kind of sounds a little veiled for me. Instruments sounds like they're placed with a thin fabric over it. It sounds like it's almost hitting their potential but not reaching quite there. However, there is a certain sharpness which I think is attributed to the elevation past the 10kHz region, but I recommend you try this IEM to see if that affects your ears or not. For imaging and separation, the imaging on this IEM is great, especially for its price. You can hear where sounds are coming from in the left and right ear and it's always a great feeling to have when an IEM achieves that. The sounds are also well separated and on busy tracks this IEM actually held its ground and was able to present all the different sounds. However, there seems to be like a void between sounds, which is a weird thing to describe and difficult to say, which I believe is helping with the separation, but it's something you have to listen to see if you have the same experience as mine. For details, there are details coming from this IEM and it's quite clear. However, I feel the micro details in the background music is not as prominent, which I feel that's the sacrifice to make the macro details more audible. So it's not a detail monster and he has sufficient details you can hear from the track. For soundstage, all of the above does help with presenting a slightly wider than average sound and a much deeper sound with the bass presentation. The word holographic comes to mind when I listen to this IAM, but it's more like an introduction to what holographic sound presentation sounds like rather than expecting 4D holographic around your body, Doctor Strange out of body, yeah, no. 
I know some people may not want to talk about EQ, but I was just curious to know how it would sound if I brought it closer to the target. So I increased the 2.5 kHz and 5 kHz regions and brought down the 1.3 and 11,000 kHz. And it actually opened up the sound a lot more. It's like the veil was lifted and I can hear the trumpet sounding powerful, clear and open. The details presents itself much cleaner. This is more towards my preference of sound and I actually loved how this IAM sounds with these adjustments. If you get this IAM, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are with these settings. It honestly blew my mind with the details and openness. For source, this IAM is relatively easy to power. I'm on the 8 to 9 o'clock dial on my hi fi and EF400 and on my ROG Phone 5S, I have about 20% volume left to spare and this is on the 3.5 millimeter termination. It amazes me how one person was able to do all these projects and I'm glad he's slowly getting the recognition he deserves. I commend the bold attempt at making something different and for me personally, I think he made just that. This may not be for everyone though. If you are seeking for something neutral, something natural, the audio Ehiku is not it. It has its own strengths and weaknesses that would certainly create a divide in whether people would love or hate this type of sound. But in the sea of V-shaped IEMs where they all have almost the same sound presentations with slight variations to one another, this presents an alternative that is unique to those presentations. But to be very honest, the sound presentation was just okay for me, but with EQ, it's a whole different story. But I recommend you try this IEM first before you purchase if you can. I'm looking forward to see what this person brings to this space in the future because it's exciting. That concludes my review of the Audio Ehiku and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I appreciate it if you consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps the show a lot and I appreciate each and every one of your support. Have you tried the Audio Ehiku? If you did, do share with me your thoughts and experiences in the comment section down below. Is it similar to my experience or not? Thank you all very much for watching. Until the next experience, take care and happy listening.